All right. On average, a banana will last 6.9 days from the time it is purchased in the store to the time it is too rotten to eat. That happens in my house. When my wife brings home bananas, I, I feel a burden to eat them before they go bad. I hate to see bananas go bad. Although my wife says it's no big deal. I'll throw them in the freezer and I'll make banana bread. But I should probably mellow out about it. But I'm always like, let's eat all those bananas. Don't let them go bad. So is the mean time to spoil greater if the banana is hung from the ceiling? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe. How do, how do you test that kind of thing? Well, the data show results of an experiment with 13 bananas that are hung from the ceiling. So they did it. They actually took 13 bananas, and here they are. There's the 13 bananas and how long it took them to spoil. So remember, the on average, bananas take 6.9 days to spoil. They hung these 13 bananas from the ceiling. One of them took 7.4 days to spoil. The other took 9.4, 5.9, 6, 8.2, 5 .8, 7, uh, oh, 7, 7 7.6, I mean, you know, et cetera. These are the 13 bananas right here. Those are the 13 bananas and how long it took for them to spoil. So do you see how they're just giving us a list of data on this one? This is a data list. Rather than telling us, you know, we tested 13 bananas and here's the average and Here's the standard deviation. They're just saying, hey, here's the actual times from the 13 bananas. You tell us what it means. So that's what's different on this question. We have to put in the data ourselves, but the calculator will handle it for us. We just have to put that data in. I'll show you. All right. So first off, is this one a um, average? Is this a P or you know, a percentage? or a U average question? A U average? Yeah, second word in the paragraph, average. And there's no P anywhere, right? You'll be able to tell this on the test, no problem. So it's an average question, it's a U question. And you know from the notes that whenever you have a U question, I'm gonna go back here, find the notes for you somewhere. Where, where are the notes, there they are. That every time you have from the hypothesis, anytime you have an average question, you see that's gonna be a T test, isn't it? All right, so we know it's going to be a t test. There we go. All right, so right away in the beginning, t test. For sure, t test. All right, and the null hypothesis. Oh, I forgot to do the claim. Always do the claim first. Let's come up here, do the claim. It's mu. And what, what are they saying? What are they claiming? Or questioning or trying to establish? Do you see it in the words? Greater. That is the mean time to spoil greater. They last longer, in other words, if you hang them from the ceiling. So that's greater. Greater than what? Greater than 6.9, which is the average in general for bananas. Yep, greater. There, that's what's being claimed. They're, they're saying, I think it'll last longer if we hang them from the ceiling. The claim is it's greater. All right. H O, whoops, H O is always equals. We know that every time, no exceptions. Equal. Okay. And then remember, one of these two has to match the claim identically. One either H O or H1. Which one? Which one is going to be the same as the claim? Could HO be the same as the claim? No way, right? HO is equals. The claim is greater. So the claim must go on the bottom. The claim must be here. And you just write exactly the same as the claim. Does that make sense? One of those two is always the claim, either HO or H1. One of those two is always the claim. Exactly the same as the claim. All right, and there's always weak evidence for HO, strong evidence for H1. All right, let's go to the calculator. 
So now this is going to be a little different. I'm going to go to the calculator for the test statistic. Let me show you what you do. So going back to the um, information, here it is. For a hypothesis test. So now you see we're down here, aren't we? Data given. They're giving us a list of data. We're doing mean for data given. So what do you do? You enter the data into L1, choose stats, then edit. Put all your data into L1. And then go to t-test and choose data. So that's what we have to do. Let me show you. Let me write it out for you. So we come in here and we're, I'm going to hit on my calculator. I'm going to hit. No, let me come back. Come right up here. I'm going to hit stat. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No. I'm going to hit stat. And then I'm going to choose edit, which is the very top option, and hit enter. Stat, edit, enter. Let me write that a little cleaner. So you have to first put in the data before you go to the tests. Stat, edit, enter. And then at L1, go to the top of L1, press clear and enter, because you got to clear out whatever data was already there. Go to the top of L1, clear and enter, and then put this data down L1, this data, these numbers. Put this data down L1. So I'm going to do that right now. That takes a little bit of time. You've got to put all those, all 13 of those numbers in. Don't, don't mess any of them up. Try to be careful. You can check them off if you want or do whatever to make sure you don't mess up. Underline them, circle them. It'll tell you how many you've put in at the bottom. It's like right now, I'm in the last one. It's telling me 13. Yeah, uh, there. Yeah, it's telling. It's asking for a 14th. It tells you at the bottom. So yeah, so I'm, I know I've got all 13 numbers in there. Okay. And then after you do that, then you hit stat again. Now you go over to tests. Then you go down to t-test. And you hit enter. And this time you choose data and hit enter. I can make that a little better. Choose data and hit enter. Is that good? And then all you, you, you don't have to put in much information. So once you've done all that, it's really, it's pretty easy. I'm kind of running out of room. I don't know where to go. I'll come over here maybe. Um, then you've got the uh, U sub zero, the list, the frequency. So the U sub zero, you know what that is. That's the number next to H sub zero. So that's the uh, 6.9, the list. It should already say L1. Now, you're telling the calculator where to go get the data from L1. It, it'll, it'll already say L1. If it doesn't, make sure it says L1. That's what you need there. Just leave it L1. Frequency is one. Don't worry about that. We'll always leave the frequency. You're saying each of those numbers in L1 
has a frequency of one, meaning occurs only one time. And, and don't worry about it. just yeah, just leave that one. It's all good. The the option there, if you if you change the frequency, would be like if you had a hundred of each of those numbers or whatever, you could change the frequency. We're not going to be doing that. And then finally, the bottom thing you choose, at least for mine, greater than whatever you had in your um, H1, and hit enter. I'm putting the data in mine. I have greater. And calculate and boom i've got my numbers and my my t value is uh what is it coming out to be t equals 2.539 Oh, I'm going to have to round mine. So 540 is 5.397. So I had to round it. And the p value is 0 0.9870. 0.9870. Okay. We're supposed to compare that to the alpha level. What is the alpha level on this one? They, I don't know. Oh, there it is 0 0.01. Alpha 0 0.01. All right. So is, is my p value. Greater than or less than the alpha level, mine is greater, isn't it? Right, the alligator mouth is open towards the bigger one. The p value is greater. So that means p is greater. I'm kind of running out of room where to write this. P, let me bring it down here. Or, no, no, right here. Okay, p is greater. P is not low, it's greater. HO does not go away. Fail to reject HO, keep HO. Right, you with me on all that? Remember how we draw our conclusion in the end. If P is greater, then it's not low. P is greater, so it's not low. So HO does not go away. We fail to reject HO. We keep HO. So our conclusion, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to circle HO. We're keeping HO. We failed to reject it. We keep it. We reject the other one. Cross out the other one. All right. So that means there's weak evidence. We believe the mu is equal, equal to 6.9. We said, yeah, the evidence is weak. Hanging the bananas from the ceiling doesn't really make them last longer. There was a little bit of evidence, but it was pretty weak. There was a 0.987. There's almost a 100% chance of luck. So that's a really big chance of luck. So it just seems that there's no evidence in favor of it. No, hanging the bananas, from the there's no evidence. We believe the average is still equal. It's the same. It doesn't make it greater. So. Um, so whichever of those says that it's um, not significantly more. Yeah, that's it. Not significantly more. That's what we want. The other one say, oh, wait a minute. This one says not significantly more also. This one says is significantly more. That's wrong. Okay, so it's one of these bottom two. I'm not sure which one. What's the difference? Um, Oh, it's, um, it's a little tricky. It's this one. Because it says, um, so there is statistically insignificant evidence to conclude that the population mean time is more than right. There's, there's not enough evidence to conclude more. Right. There it is. So there we go.